protect yourself and your family from unexpected challenges. Consider accident only income protection. Click the link in the description to find out more. You want anything bad enough? Don't make excuses. You gotta lose your time and your sleep for it. You find a way. Boxing King Media in association with SaveMoreMoney.com. It's Sunday morning. Gareth A. Davis looking very festive in uh, in your lovely <laughs> home over there. <laughs> Thank you. Same to you. Merry Christmas. You and happy well. Eid when Eid comes as well. Indeed, a few months left yet. Um, let's jump straight into it, Gareth. Uh, what a night of boxing! Uh, got to. I'm going to jump in straight away with the Sonny Edwards. Or I'll, I'll come back to the undercard. Everyone talked about this fight being elite versus elite, best versus best, and some people said it might be a boring fight, but it was a complete opposite. Uh, just tell me what what was going through your mind as he was watching. You know, let's just say the first four or five rounds. Well, I don't think we could have predicted that, that Sonny Edwards was going to hold his feet like he did from the opening round. I think he got... Now, this is just me talking from an armchair as, a, as an analyst um, or a pundit, if you like. But obviously now, with hindsight, he got his tactics wrong, really. And I thought it looked like they had a game plan early on of holding his feet and trying to counter and outbox um, Bam Rodriguez. Um, I think they felt that Sonny would be able to make a miss from the mid-range, which he wasn't able to. Um, and as he got into the fight, um, I've got my scoring here. I mean, the first round was very close. Uh, I thought Rodriguez won the second. Then Edwards had a couple of good rounds. And then I had Bam all the way then till the stoppage and the knockdown in, in the ninth. Um, and obviously... He was hindered by the damaged eye in the second round, that, that hematoma or that um, mouse that came up very quickly. Um, I think I'm not critical here of um, Edwards because he took the defeat magnanimously. I've watched all the videos afterwards. I thought he was fantastic. Um, and he's a guy whose spirit, yes, he'll be down, but he seemed undaunted and undented in lots of ways, even though it was a dominant performance in the end by Rodriguez. But I, I, I think you could tell Grant Smith in the corner around about, I reckon, the fifth round, sixth round, said to him, start moving and winning with your jab. Um, you're leaving yourself open. I, I, I think tactically he got it wrong, but I take nothing away from Bam Rodriguez. He's a little monster. He's an animal uh, in that weight division. And uh, I can see him going on to fights with uh, Estrada and Chocolatito now as well. Do, do you think, because uh, I was watching the fight and I was thinking to myself, is he holding his feet because the seven-inch uh, reach advantage that Bam Bam had? Because for him to get in, he had to almost kind of stay close to him because when he was when we saw him kind of trying to jab from the outside, he was falling short, and then when he was falling short, we saw Jesse kind of just come back at him with really quick um, counter counter shots. Do you think that might have played a part? Yeah, but maybe maybe in the past we haven't seen Edwards' footwork work um, uh, aggressively for him, um, but we've seen it defensively. Um, I, it was a completely different style to what we've seen in fight. And I, and I had a look at his last five fights, obviously all world title level fights. And you look at the opponents, 15 and 0, 38 and 2, 12 and 1, 16 and 0, 39 and 2. He was against formidable opponents who could all punch, maybe not with the devastating power of Bam Bam Rodriguez. But um, I just feel like tactically it was wrong. And now people will talk about levels and that Bam was always the number one in the division. Um, unfortunately, because it was so one-sided by the end, I don't think we'll see a rematch myself. Um, but I think that will of the wisp in and out, Sonny Edwards, we didn't see at all. We might have seen glimpses of it, but look, it, 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 was, it went completely... It was a really hard fight to call. I, I thought that Edwards would get hit harder and a little bit more than he'd ever been hit, but not to that extent um, where 
his battery levels went down and down and down, didn't they? Because he, he shipped so many punches. And I think, and he didn't really seem to hurt Rodriguez um, during the fight as well. So um, it, it, it was, it was a, a salutary moment for him in his career. But I thought Sonny Edwards, great spirit that he is, great personality and great boxer, um, I think he took it incredibly well. Um, I, I, I praise him for what he said to Eddie Hearn afterwards, that thank you for the opportunity to fight in America um, and a unification of this type. He'd never dreamt of having a, a fight of that magnitude um, in America. Um, but it, it, was, it was surprising. It was surprising. Although when you see it, I think he, he fought Bam Rodriguez's fight. What about the final moments of that fight, Gareth? Because there's a lot of debate online. I've seen like Curtis Woodhouse, Anthony Fowler have kind of highlighted it, and Stuart Hall, the retired boxer. Um, they're obviously, the trans, uh, they're basically saying that Sonny quit. Um, but there's also another opinion that the corner pulled him out. And there's also some people saying maybe the corner pulled him, could have pulled him out earlier. But we saw even up until the last moments, he was still letting his hands go. So where, where did you kind of sit with it all towards you know the, the final moments? Well, I mean, when you hear that he's got an orbital socket um, fracture, if that's the case, um, then he was he did the right thing. Um, he did look one-eyed towards the end. Um, and as well, that might have played into the way that he had to box the fight um, because of his vision. Um, no, he, he didn't quit. Um, he's not, well, he's not a quitter. He, he, he was well beaten by that stage in the fight. And I think you could see he, and certainly on the, I watched it on the monitor, obviously, um, on on my laptop on my phone. Um, he had a word with Grant Smith, who had a word in his ear. And I think Edward said, no, I can't go on with my eye. I think that was obvious. And he said afterwards, he was worried about um, the damage to his eye and was worried about blindness and, you know, the lasting effect. He did the right thing. He lives to fight another day. He'll still be in great fights. He's not an old man. Um, he'll, he's still got a career ahead of him. Yeah, I've seen some people say, he said, I can't go on. And I think there's some opinion that he may have said, I can't see. And then at that point, yeah. the corner's gone. I'm stopping it. So uh, it, either way, a, a brilliant fight. And I think from knowing Sonny, I, I know that he... He could make light flyweight, but, but he chooses to fight at that weight because um, he basically knows the big money fights are only at that weight. So do you think now that Jesse moves up, he potentially will probably get another shot at somebody else at that weight? Yeah, I do. That's exactly what will happen in my view. Eddie Hearn will, will throw some dice, shake a few uh, dice and throw them on the table. And I think he will get another world title fight. Maybe not immediately. Um, but I do think, you know, look, he's world level. We know that. You can't judge a guy on one performance. And I think he came up against a very, very fine fighter in, in Bam Rodriguez. Um, you look at, I was um, in the build up, of course. We know that Rodriguez, um, for that level of fighter, um, for that, that size of fighter, has extraordinary power. I think it was 11 knockouts in his 18 wins, in my view, undefeated. Um, and, you know, when you think that I was just looking down the record when we were building up um, to the fight, um, you know, some of the victories he's had, you know, um, Rung Versailles, um, who'd had two, the first win against Chocolatito, I didn't count, I was there, I didn't think he won it, but obviously stopped Chocolatito in the second fight. Um, and obviously, um, you know, Wisek Sil Wangsek, uh, Wangek, um, is is um, is the same guy as well, the Thai fighter. He stopped him as well. He's a very powerful fighter, um, and he again could go on to great things. He could become one of the great flyweight, super flyweights in history. Um, he's got so much ability, and that's why I say I think um, he'll get those big fights now as well. Final thing I want to touch on. I saw Eddie Hearn said in an interview last night about the, the mental side of dealing with a defeat, even though Sonny has come out and kind of joked about losing and kind of accepted it and he's obviously been humble in defeat. 
But when he's back home, he's felt, you know, he knows he's not a world champion anymore. He's lost his O. Uh, he's sat at home on his own. Do you think, you know, I don't know if you've got much experience with fighters and speaking to him like days after defeats. Uh, what do you think he might be going through? He'll go through a hard time. He'll be annoyed with himself. He might be frustrated that he didn't implement his game plan. He didn't listen to Grant Smith when he went back out. Maybe he couldn't at the time. He got involved in a firefight. As I say, it wasn't his style of fight. He's not known as a puncher. Um, he did land some heavy shots on Rodriguez, but barely for me put a dent in him. So um, I think he's a very strong character and he's a very open character. Um, as he said, he was the better man on the night and um, his opponent. He dealt with it afterwards. The two men were together in the dressing room. He, he's got a strong boxing family around him. Um, they, they're a great group up in Sheffield. His brother Charlie's around. Um, so I expect him to, to have a break and come back strong, make sure he's healed. Uh, but I think he's a very strong character. He's very unusual, very unique character. Uh, maybe I'll go and do a bit of commentary now. He's brilliant at commentary. He's been on a couple of shows with me on Talk Sport. And he's fantastic to to work with. Um, but yeah, I think he'll be fine. I, I really do think he'll be fine. I think, like you said, he's a great character, great fighter. And hopefully the British fans can celebrate what, what he did because he brought a lot of eyes to the flyweight division uh, division last night, which we, it's not very common. So um, that's pretty much it, guys. Well, it was a terrific fight. It was a terrific fight. I mean, it was a, I was watching at four in the morning here. It was a terrific uh, fight to watch. You're about to fly to Riyadh, aren't you? I, I am, yep. I'll be joining you shortly. Um, really looking forward to the day of reckoning. Very good victory, by the way, uh, for Josh Kelly um, in Sunderland last night as well. Jab, uppercut, finish. Um, it, I thought he was really, really impressive. Um, and uh, the, the same punch that Jake Paul won with on Friday night as well. Um, mm. So he's got back in the win column against a bona fide boxer now. Definitely so. Well, Gareth, I look forward to uh, meeting you in Saudi and we'll, we'll do something there in person, uh, maybe find some little uh, bougie spot and uh, do a little interview there. We'll go to a shisha lounge. We will, mate. We will. Gareth, it's been a pleasure. Um, I'll catch you soon, man. Thank you very much. Cheers. Have you ever been stranded on the side of a motorway with a broken down car? Like me, is that something that worries you? That's where Motor Breakdown Insurance comes in. If your vehicle breaks down, a trained professional will be sent out to get you back on the road. Or if this is not possible within the specified time frame to transport you to your home or to the nearest garage. You want anything bad enough? Don't make excuses. You gotta lose your time and your sleep for it. You find a way.